Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we now start to apply the idea of entropy into the reality, into turbines, steam engines, etc. So this is problem 7.11. We have solved this problem before in the channel, and you can see this back in the day when we were doing still by hand. Uh, I'm going to try to skip some steps and focus on some other stuff here with this version. So feel, feel free to jump there if you want to have a different explanation. Problem 7.111. Steam enters a steady flow adiabatic turbine at 350 degrees Celsius and 4 megapascals. The steam leaves the turbine at 120 kilopascals as a saturated vapor. Determine the isentropic efficiency of the turbine. So we have a little turbine here. We are entering with a set of properties that, you know, scream superheated state, but we can check. And then we're leaving at a saturated vapor. So they're already kind enough to give us that the output is a saturated vapor. So what we're seeing here, right, and then obviously the um, steam is taking this energy and converting it into uh, work. And so it's outputting some work for us. So what we're seeing here, right, this this inlet and outlet, this is a, the, a real case, right? This is, you know, we can measure the, 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 the quality of the, or the energy associated with the steam, the thermodynamic properties of it as it's entering, we can measure them as they're leaving, and we can calculate the work based on that. But we know that, you know, this is not the, the whole story because in reality, we could get more out of it. We know that, you know, uh, as we're going from one state to the next and we're traveling the path, all the way to the, the, the second thermodynamic state, uh, if we follow a reversible path, we're going to maximize the amount of um, work we can get out of it, right? The energy being outputted from our uh, turbine. However, if we have irreversibilities along the way, we're going to be, quote-unquote, losing some of that energy, right? So the idea here is to compare how much, and the, the precisely the idea of the isentropic efficiency, right, is to Evaluate, okay, uh, number two is to evaluate how much energy am I outputting in respect to how much energy I could output, could output, right? So if I don't have, if I have a completely reversible case, which by the way, is not what we want in practice, right? We want in practice, the real real deal is actually the one that we have some irreversibilities, but uh, what is the comparison between what we're really getting out in respect to what we could, on an ideal case, get out, all right? So to do that, uh, if we want to know, you know, what is the, the um, net result, so, you know, this is another way of saying this is, so the second efficiency is just going to be the net output, let's call it real, real, divided by the net reversible or ideal. Actually, let's do the whole thing. Ideal. And this is the reversible one, right? Whilst this one is the irreversible one. All right. Beautiful. So how do we calculate the network on the real world? Well, we know that from you know, a lot of different problems we did already. We take, well, if you want energy instead of power, we take the enthalpy of the first state, we subtract by the enthalpy of the second state, and we're gonna get the work output. Why? Well, super simple, right? We have, uh, you know, enthalpy one entering, we have enthalpy two leaving here, and if we do a little energy balance on this turbine, we'll see that H1 needs to be equal to work plus oops, H2, and therefore work equals H1 minus H2, right? So first law of thermodynamics. What about this bottom guy here? How we can get this? Well, if we want that, um, what are we going to call it? Reversible, reversible work. Then all we need to do is, I want to know, I know the input is a, the same, right? I'm leaving from the, first, the same state, but instead of going down all the way to H2, I'm going to go down even further. I'm going to go down all the way to my isentropic state 2. So what is this? This is an imaginary state, okay? Not the real deal. It's an imaginary state 
that would assume where I would end up had I not lost any energy due to irreversibilities. So it's definitely a state that would have a smaller, smaller energy than the real deal, which would then cause this difference to be greater, which would then mean this guy is greater, right? So the reversible work is always, always, always going to be greater than the uh, irreversible work, okay? So how do we do that? Well, we just assume a state in which the entropy is exactly the same as the entropy of the first state. So there's no change in entropy, so therefore there's no creation of irreversibilities. In other words, if depending on how you learn the nomenclature, there is no entropy gen, S gen, no entropy being generated. Okay. So what's the game plan here? Game plan is uh, I have the first state and the second state defined. So I'm going to find um, entropy for the first state. I want to go ahead also and grab the entropy for the first state. Then I'm going to grab the entropy for the second state. Then I'm going to find out more things about these, the ideal case, the isentropic case. So let's call it um, ideal, ideal case. And of this guy, I need to grab uh, the entropy too. Once I have all those guys, I can go ahead and calculate what is my efficiency, second law efficiency. All right, that's a game plan. So the first state, super easy. We have both properties. 4 megapascals, 350 degrees Celsius. I'm going to go, well, I can go here if I want to first. So 350 degrees Celsius, here we are. And obviously the pressure is that I have is lower than the saturated pressure. So this is a superheated state, right? So I can go straight into my superheated table. Uh, my pressure is 4 megapascals. Superheated. 1 megapascals, 2 megapascals, 3.5, here you go, 4 megapascals. And I'm interested in the 350 degrees Celsius, here we are. So therefore, I am interested in the entropy, which I'll use for my ideal case afterwards, and the entropy, which is going to be the starting point for everybody, right? So 30, 93.3, and the 6.5843, right? Let's take note of those two guys. Now let's go ahead and grab the enthalpy for my saturated vapor that is at 120 kilopascals. So here we are, saturated vapor pressure table, 120. I don't have 120, I have 125 and 101. So guess what? A little interpolation. Okay, I'm going to find values between these two fellas here. And here I'm just interested in the enthalpy, so I'm going to go ahead and grab. I'm going to go ahead and grab my. Where is it? Here we go. Enthalpy. Okay, and it's a saturated liquid. Was it saturated liquid or vapor? Sorry, I forget. Vapor. Vapor. Sorry. So, saturated vapor. So this is the values I want. It's going to be somewhere between those guys. I'm going to do a little interpolation. If you don't know how to interpolate, check out these videos that we have on the channel about interpolation. You can learn how to do it. I'll be interpolating for 120 kilopascals, which is going to spit out that my um, enthalpy is 28. That's oh, right, 26. 2682.9. And that is kilojoules kilograms. All right, beautiful. And this is um, equal to enthalpy 2, right? The real deal, the real deal. All right, last, I want to find this imaginary case that is also at, let's write down our ideal case, our imaginary case, that is at um, 120 kilopascals, yet has an entropy of, um, what did we say? Nine, uh, six point, six point five, eight, four, three. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to focus here on the these two lines here, these two values. I'm going to look at these. Let me get rid of this. Okay, and I'm going to look just at the entropy just now. So I'm looking at these values here. All right, 
with these guys here. And I want to see, okay, is that entropy value, this 6 point, 6 point 6.5 guy, is it between these two? Is it greater than the, the bigger one? Is it smaller than the smallest one? Or is it between? Well, it's between, right? It's 6. And 6 is greater than 1.3 and smaller than 7. So therefore, I can conclude, okay, so therefore, my ideal case is a saturated mixture. And we like those because we know how to deal with them, right? If I want to know what the quality is for that guy, I just need to take the property I know, subtract by the property of the liquid, liquid, one extra right there, and then the difference between them, right? Vapor minus liquid. All right, so we have all those guys. So that's beautiful because that means we can do 6.5843 minus what's the one for the liquid? Well, I don't have one per se. It's going to be somewhere between these two guys. Once again, I need to interpolate. And the same thing goes for this one here. Or if you want, as we learned, for this one here, which is just the difference between them. All right, and if we do interpolate, what I got here is 1.36 for this guy here. And then for the middle fella here, I got 5.939, uh, okay? So again, interpolation, a lot of videos here for you guys to check out if you're not sure what's going on. So I can go ahead and plug those values in, 1.36 and 5.939. So 1.36, and here the difference between the two, 5.939. All right, so the X, the quality that I find is 87.97%, all right, 97%. So it means I have about 88% vapor and um, the rest of it is liquid. But then remember that all this is to be able to find what's the entropy of this imaginary state that we're calling 2S. And then if it's a saturated mixture, well, it's just going to be the 87.97%. 97% time times the enthalpy of the saturated vapor plus you know 100 minus 87.97% that is the rest and the um, enthalpy of the saturated liquid again once again I don't have those values per se and I'm gonna have to interpolate I only have for 101 and 125 so I need to interpolate and I need to interpolate over here enthalpy Saturated liquid, saturated vapor, boom. So I'm going to be interpolating between these guys here and between, go away, and between these guys here, right? What I need to do is more interpolation to be able to grab the values that I need. And then I get out of this that this guy here is 400, 400, let's put it, make it thicker, make it 400. And 39 when I interpolate in over here, it's going to be between 26, 7, 26, 8, and indeed, what we get is 26, 82, 26, 82.9. Okay, I get interpolation. So, it is sorry, two, six. 82.9 and here 439 both kilojoules per kilograms which means which means h2s equals approximately 2413 kilojoules per kilograms All right and that's the last piece of the puzzle for us to be able to conclude and find out our Efficiency, where are we? Where's the efficiency? Oh, hey, here you go. All right, so we went ahead and grabbed the enthalpy and the entropy for state one. We grabbed the enthalpy for state two. Those were easy. Then we had to explore the ideal case and we ended up finding it's a saturated mixture, but eventually we were able to grab the enthalpy for this case here. And now all we're left to do, going to do is find the efficiency. So the efficiency, as we talked about before, is going to be where. Oh, here it is. Okay, it's just going to be the net work output of these guys and the net work output we've established will just be 1 minus the real deal divided by 1 minus 
the ideal case, the ideal case, right? So plugging down the numbers that we know, that we found, this is the 3093.3. Over here we have the 2682.9. We're dividing the whole thing by the same 3093.3 that did not change. And the new one that we found, which is the 2413, right? 2413, yep, this one here. All right, so what does this give us? This gives us, you know, 0 0.60326. Uh, sorry, 0 0.6032. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so let's approximate that to 60.3%. Okay. So what does that mean? It means that, you know, if we were to do, if we were to leave, if we were to leave from this same starting point here, right? The, these same properties, 4 megapascals, 350 degrees Celsius, and we were to go through this steam turbine leaving at 120 kilopascals, but without generating any entropy, without S-gen, right? Without any irreversibilities. If we were to do this in a reversible manner, we would be able to get um, about 40% more than we're getting. We're only getting 60% of what we could get if we were to do the, the reversible way. All right, but because of these, this S-gen, because of these irreversibilities, what we end up is with 60% of what we could have wrapped else. All right, I hope this helped you out. I hope this made sense. If you have any questions, as per usual, just leave them down below in the comment section. Uh, if this video helped you out, consider giving it a like, and we'll talk soon.